Hi all, and welcome to today's story. We're going to be reading the story called Stolen Girl. Stolen Girl is written and illustrated by Trina Safiotti and Norma McDonald. I want you to have a look at the front cover and just think for a moment what the story might be about using the clues such as the illustrations or and also using the title of the story, Stolen Girl. Okay, let's dive straight into it, shall we? She wakes to the sound of the bell ringing and stumbles out of bed. Hurry up before you get in trouble, the older girls warn her. The girls eat their breakfast and bread and milk and no one talks. This is just one of the many rules at the children's home. In the early morning silence, her thoughts wander back to her life before she had came to this place. She used to live with her mother in a corrugated iron house with a huge yard that seemed to stretch to the sun. Each morning, they would sit on the veranda eating damper, thick with golden syrup, and drinking sweet, milky tea. Her mother took her to the river every day and taught her how to fish and swim. As they walked, she learned how to hunt goanna. On the way home, they would collect sugar bag honey from the eucalyptus trees. In the afternoons, her mother rested in a hammock strung between two old river gums and the girl would play with a family of lizards. Their evenings were spent sitting around the fire, listening to the elders tell stories about the good old days. One hot and dusty day, they walked into town. While her mother was buying flour, a man in uniform came and dragged the girl to his car. Mama, she screamed, and she struggled to escape. Her mother ran out of the store, crying at her out her daughter's name, but it was too late. The chief protector of Aborigine, Aboriginals is sending you to a new home. You'll like it there, the old man told her. The girl sat silently, hoping that if she was very still, that she would forget where she was. It was raining the day she arrived at the children's home. The first heavy drops of the wet had turned the earth into a bright yellow ochre. They took away the clothes that her mother had sewn and gave her a faded dress someone else had worn. When am I going home? she asked. You ain't, none of us are, said the old girls. They tell her that she will get used to the new place just like they have. In the morning, they're taught how to read and write and in the afternoons to cook and clean. The pots in the kitchen are heavy and the water is steaming hot. The girls' hands become red raw from the harsh soap and sometimes they even bled. At the end of each day, she was exhausted. Every night, she dreams of going back home and running into her mother's arms. When she wakes up, she is still in the dormitory. They have given her a new name, but she whispers her Aboriginal name to herself over and over again. Sometimes they shout at her for talking in her own language. In the evening, she softly sings, sending the notes beyond the iron fence, far away from her mother's fire. She imagines that her mother can hear her voice echoing off the, the desert sand. She dreams she's a star shooting through the dark night. Here I am, Mama. I have not forgotten your stories, she says as she snuggles close to her. Again, she wakes to the ringing of the bell. Weeks and months pass. Winter comes and the girls are made to do their exercises in the yard. Shivering, they huddle together, trying to get warm. She dreams her mother is waiting at the gate, wearing her best dress. Time to come home now, her mother says with a shy smile. The people from the children's home drag her away.
Some of the older girls are taken by white families to work as domestics and she hears them being told that they are lucky. At that moment, she decides she doesn't want to be lucky. In the school room, she works out how many steps to the river, how far she can swim before getting tired, and how long before they will realize that she is gone. The weather gets warmer and she practices gliding beneath the surface of the water, barely making a ripple. And the time comes. Early before the bell starts ringing, she slips from her bed and walks silently through the halls. Pulling a chair to the cupboard, she unhooks the key and makes her way out of the door. With a deep breath, she turns the key in the lock. The door swings open and she takes her first step towards home. And that is the end of our story.